Hey guys, Cliff Olson, Doctor of Audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in this video, I'm about to blow your mind with a new form of hearing aid Bluetooth technology. Coming up. The world quietly changed back in 2014 when hearing aid manufacturer Resound announced their first made-for-iPhone hearing aids, which allowed Resound Link's hearing aid users to stream audio directly from their iPhones into both of their ears. And since this happened, hearing aids have never been the same. Before this, some individuals could stream audio into their hearing aids, but it required them to wear something around their neck or plug something like this into the bottom of their hearing aid, which was not very practical. Now with today's modern hearing aid technology, you can pretty much listen to anything that you want to. This includes music, podcasts, audiobooks, YouTube videos, and yes, even phone calls directly in your ears just by simply hitting the play button or answering a phone call. What made this direct connectivity possible was something that we call Bluetooth. Bluetooth was originally invented back in 1994 and was a form of short range radio connection using ultra high frequency radio waves at 2.4 gigahertz. This allowed small wireless devices to communicate with each other. If you're wondering how Bluetooth got its name, it was actually named after Harold Bluetooth, who was the king of Denmark and Norway circa 958 through 986. This was based on the idea that this Bluetooth technology will be able to unite different wireless devices just like King Bluetooth was able to unite the different tribes of Denmark into one kingdom. Additionally, something that I found to be incredibly interesting is that the Bluetooth symbol is actually a combination of his initials H and B using letters from an old Scandinavian alphabet. Now at this point, most people are at least familiar with Bluetooth because pretty much any electronic device that you have that has wireless connectivity capabilities has Bluetooth inside of it. Whether this is your TV, your smartphone, your dumb phone, your computer, or even your vehicle. The most common forms of Bluetooth are Bluetooth Classic and made for iPhone Bluetooth Low Energy. Now most modern hearing aids use Bluetooth Low Energy and this is for obvious reasons. Bluetooth Low Energy uses about half the amount of energy as Bluetooth Classic, which makes it a really good option for hearing aids that use small disposable batteries or small rechargeable batteries because you want to preserve that battery life as much as possible. However, even Bluetooth Low Energy is not perfect when it comes to streaming audio directly into your hearing aids. This is what led the hearing aid industry to work directly with the Bluetooth Special Interest Group to develop a completely new form of Bluetooth that will ultimately be the future of wireless connectivity worldwide. But before I explain what this new type of Bluetooth is and why it's going to take over. If you could do me a huge favor and click the like button, I really appreciate it because it helps out the channel immensely. And if you are not yet subscribed to the channel with notifications turned on, go ahead and do that as well because that ensures that you never miss one of my newly released videos and I publish a ton of new videos every single week. That being said, I really appreciate it and a huge shout out to Resound for sponsoring today's video, but more on them in a little bit. This new form of Bluetooth is called Low Energy Audio. Low Energy Audio, often abbreviated abbreviated LE Audio is a new form of Bluetooth designed specifically for audio purposes that uses an LC3 codec made possible by version 5.2 of the Bluetooth core specification. Now don't worry about all of these technical terms. A lot of this will start making sense here in a second. This new LE Audio using the LC3 codec will provide better sound quality than the older SBC codec even at significantly lower bit rates. This is huge because you will be able to maintain a high level of sound quality without sacrificing the battery life of your hearing aids and your other wireless devices. Another added benefit of this form of Bluetooth is that you will be able to independently connect each one of your hearing aids to your other wireless devices. One of the several limitations of Bluetooth Classic is that you can only pair one of your hearing aids up to your other wireless device. So if that particular hearing aid starts to malfunction, not only do you lose the streaming capability into that hearing aid, but it also cannot share that audio signal with your opposite hearing aid. Low energy audio Bluetooth will allow both of those hearing aids to be connected up to your wireless device at the same time. So if one of your hearing aids malfunctions, you can still stream the audio into your opposite ear. LE audio Bluetooth will also become the universally accepted form of Bluetooth worldwide. So you're not having to constantly figure out if the type of Bluetooth that you have inside of your hearing aids is going to be compatible with the other wireless devices that you're using. And it is expected that by year 2026, we will have 7.6 billion Bluetooth wireless devices shipped annually.
annually. But perhaps the thing that everybody is most excited about when it comes to this new form of low energy audio Bluetooth is something called AuraCast Broadcast Audio. AuraCast will allow hearing aid users to share their audio with other hearing aid users or even earbud users or tap into a transmitted Bluetooth signal inside of a public venue. What I mean by this is that if you're listening to a song from your smartphone, you can actually share that song with somebody else who has AuraCast enabled earbuds or hearing aids. And if you happen to find yourself in a public venue like an airport, school, or museum, you will be able to share the audio of that venue with anyone else who has AuraCast enabled devices. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well that's great, but are there any hearing aids out there that actually use this LE Audio Bluetooth that unlocks these different features? Well, look no further than the Resound Nexia hearing aids from Resound, today's video sponsor. Just like in 2014, when Resound was the first to announce their made for iPhone hearing aids, Resound has basically done it again with their new Nexia line of devices. Not only are the Resound Nexia hearing aids amazing hearing aids, but they are also the first hearing aids to incorporate this low energy audio Bluetooth that are AuraCast enabled. This means that as soon as your other wireless devices start using low energy audio Bluetooth, your hearing aids will be ready to go. Now I've been talking about low energy audio Bluetooth for the past several years now, and I've had a lot of people say, Cliff, I am not going to get new hearing aids until my hearing aids have this particular feature inside of them. That's because this new form of Bluetooth will be completely revolutionary inside of the hearing aid industry, just like other forms of Bluetooth were when it first came out back in 2014. So if you're one of those people who's been putting off treating your hearing loss, or you've been waiting to upgrade your hearing aid technology because you've been essentially waiting for this feature, I'm happy to say that that wait is finally over. Resound even planned this perfectly because their new TV streamer plus even has AuraCast inside side of it, which means that you can stream TV audio directly into your Resound hearing aids, and anybody else who has Resound hearing aids, or even just uses AuraCast enabled earbuds, can also stream audio directly from the TV into their ears as well. And if you have not experienced streaming TV audio, you are missing out and you need to try it. It is just a matter of time before virtually every wireless device on the planet is using low energy audio Bluetooth that is AuraCast enabled. And this has implications that goes much further than just being beneficial for individuals with hearing loss, which means that we will see the widespread adoption of this new form of Bluetooth much quicker than we saw previous versions. At this moment, I'm getting a little nostalgic because I remember how much of a game changer it was to have this direct Bluetooth streaming capability inside of hearing aids starting back in 2014. And if I'm being honest, this pales in comparison to what we're going to be able to do with low energy audio Bluetooth and AuraCast in the future, especially for hearing aid users.